Sir, it is really grateful to have Keith Dungeon with us today, chat about crickets and the dolphins. Guy's been working really, really hard to get where he is now, so it's really good to have him on the show. Thank you so much, Keith. All right, thank you so much for having me. Lucky man. Keith, um, you come across as you, you enjoy challenges and, and you want to mm -hmm. be on your cricket and you've played high in schools cricket as well as SA under 19. Um, and has it been a nice, or did you enjoy those weeks? I'm sure you enjoyed those weeks. And is it sort of like a trend you'd like to continue through the years? Yeah, definitely. I think that I'm, I'm someone who's challenge driven and um, goal orientated. And I think that's always sort of brought the best out of me. So I don't think that'll ever change in my career. Um, I think that's what really gets me going, is what gets me up in the morning when I've got a good goal to achieve. Mm. No, that's excellent. That's very, very good. And um, because, you know, you've played 50 first class games. Um, and it seems yes, it's yeah. come and gone very quickly, but I'm sure you're looking forward to the next 50 games? Yeah, I think um, the, once I got to 50, I think you, you realize you're no longer that um, young up and comer. You know, you've been around for a few years now, and it just feels like it's gone past in the blink of an eye. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if God willing, I'm, I'm there for another 50, I will, I will take it with open arms. No, very, very good. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're glad that cricket's been happening. It's always nice. It's, yeah. and it's nice to see that it's finally, you know, game time's happening. The guys are putting all that hard work into the games now. Um, and I even believe now Super Sports is going to televise some games. So it's, it's good. So there's a lot of exciting things to look forward to. It's very, very good. Um, before you got your Dolphins contract, you were spending some time with Hayes and Coastals, and I think it was about two seasons there where you did very, very well for ball. Um, mm. Well, I'd say I was the bat as well. And then you, <laughs> you got your, your Dolphins contract. Um, it was sort of like a classic case of, of being in your element, just working hard and, and pushing the limbs to say, you know, I'm eventually going to break through. And then the, the, the breakthrough did eventually happen. Yeah, um, the Coastals was an interesting move for me because obviously I grew up in Shouting and I had um, spent time with the Strikers straight out of school. Um, from 2013, 2014, I played for the Strikers. I made my debut for the Lions in 2017. And, you know, that Lions squad was very strong at the time, and I didn't really see too, too much of growth at that stage. Um, and I was working under Jack Tugana at the time, and, you know, he was a fantastic, fantastic coach. And, I mean, with him, Enoch and Quinn, and Sahir Masakian, they really are some of the guys that I have to thank for where I am right now. But the case of the personal move was... It was just one where I had to take a leap of faith, put myself out of the out of the comfort zone I was in, and um, came down to Roger Telemarcus, and he backed me to to give me a go. Unfortunately, there was no spot in the Dolphins team, so I had to earn my straps. And um, I was very fortunate enough to perform when I needed to for the Coastals and and get a contract. No, uh, it's always, but it's it, it's a it must be a sigh of relief and a good feeling that you know because I believe in hard work yeah. pays off. And then was that something that you also sort of believe in, in your, your way of, of life? Yeah, 100%. I think it was something that I've, I've tried to live by when I was, um, since I was very young, was that if you put the effort in at some stage, you're going to be rewarded. Um, you know, some people's journeys take a different path. Some guys get it a little bit quicker. Some guys have to work just that little bit harder. But that's okay because everyone's, everyone's journeys are, are, are at their own pace. So for me, if it means I had to work for a couple of seasons harder than other people, then so be it. And that's what I, that's what I wanted to do. Oh, that's great. Yeah, no, it's because I believe in that philosophy quite a lot. Well, mm. Yeah, so no, it's, it's good to hear. But now, obviously, um, making your, your, your Dolphins debut must have been very exciting. But what is it like to be a lunch, a, a lunch watchman? <laughs> Uh, I don't think I'll ever live that one down. Um, my, my good old mate that's now playing is about to play for New Zealand, um, Gavin Conway. Yeah, it was, it was actually his um, his doing. We were at uh, we were at Northwest, I think, for my debut, and I think I think I was just out of school, and I was absolutely wetting myself. I was so nervous. Um, and I think we were in the field for geez, 120 overs or something. We were chasing we had a 450 in potch. It was flat. And I think it was just before lunch on day two, we bowled him out. And uh, Devin Conway came up to me as we were walking up. He was like, Dutch, I don't like batting before before lunch. Um, you got to pad up for me. 
And I was like, nah, man, you're joking. He's like, oh, laugh it off. He's like, no, no, really. Uh, I don't like it. Normally, it was Jammer. I think Sean Jamison does it for me. But, uh, no, you're going to do it to me now. And I was like, oh, whatever. We get upstairs and Enoch's there and they're all in on it. So they're like, okay, cool, keep pad up. So I'm like looking around. I put my pads on. Everyone's watching me, laughing. All of a sudden, Yasser Cook goes out. I think Clicky Deacon got him at LBW two balls before the cutoff for lunch. I start walking down the stairs and Devin comes running past me. He's like, don't run for it. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> it was not serious. As a as a 17, 18 year old boy, that's, that's not something that you you want to tell the, the <laughs> professional, the Lions player that no 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 I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And unfortunately, I've never lived it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's excellent. That's so good. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, what happens in those change rooms? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, know. It's good. <laughs> At the time, it was emotional, but right now, it's a good laugh about it now. That's really very really good. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about your ability with the ball. Um, mm. Some fantastic stats. I think seven for 43 in first class and seven for 35 in list A um, as your best batting figures thus far. Um, and you're doing a lot right with the ball. Sort of you, mm. who was your, your mentor growing up? Who helped you channel to develop your, your bowling ability? I think starting off at school, um, so Mitchley was my, my first bursting coach. Um, and he sort of identified me as a young under-15 bowler who had a bit of pace and a bit raw. Um, and he sort of worked with me and he encouraged me just to try and bowl as fast as I could at the time. And it was probably the best thing for me because he brought out a natural aggression in me and a hunger to get better. And um, coming from part-time boys, you know, we were one of the traditional boys' schools, but we never had it easy. We had to win. You know, if we, had, if we wanted to win, we had to work for every win. And then obviously going to schools, uh, starting schools, I had... Coaches like Ryan Cook and Enoch and Quay. Um, I had the pleasure of working with someone like Ray Jennings. Those guys who were, who were hard on me um, was kind of the, the character and the coach I needed to push me, to make me into that, that sort of great player that I've become. Because uh, I, I feel like if I'm, if, if I'm expecting it just to happen, it doesn't happen. So, you know, those guys going throughout the years and then obviously working into the Lions of Gordon Parsons and Jack Toyana, they sort of molded me into into the type of player I am now. No, oh, that's excellent. That's brilliant. And one aspect that I enjoy talking about as well is that, you know, to make the starting 11, it's never easy. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the coaches have different criteria, different conditions, different fixtures. It's, it's quite interesting. How do you sort of handle that mental aspect of it where you've got to say to yourself, you know, just keep going, stay on top of things, and perhaps you don't get picked, you know, there's always the next game. How do you sort of stay yeah. mentally sharp and ready for the, the next game? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably one of the hardest things as a professional cricketer to, to deal with is the, the disappointment of not playing. Um, it's, that, it's that initial sting of the coach coming up to you and saying, you know, sorry, Gaji, unfortunately, you're not going to make the, the starting 11 this week. And my look, my approach is, you know, I try to, it means that I need to do something more. So I look at it, okay, cool, where can I get better? So if I was, not good enough this week. How am I going to get 10% better? If that 10% is enough, next week it's not enough. Okay, cool. What can I work on to get better? Um, keeping a good, positive team environment. I think if I'm the guy for the team, you know, that's that's uh, a thing that I've always prided myself on. Um, I think if I'm, if I'm just doing the right things, doing what I've been doing, that's got me this far. Like I said, my journey may just take a little bit longer than someone else. So that means I'm not cracking right now. As long as the team's doing well, there's nothing more I can, I can sort of argue about. So it just means that I've got to keep pushing harder. So instead of pushing someone out of their spot, hopefully pushing someone up. So if guys are going up to the pro tiers, that's a little bit better for me because now I'm replacing, I've got big shoes to fill instead of trying to knock someone off their pedestal. That's just kind of the way I look at it. Mm. So would it also be fair to say something on the lines like this where you've just got to look out for that opportunity and opportunity does come knocking? And you've actually just got to yeah. wait for it and listen to it. Would that be sort of the fair, same sort of approach that you have? Just waiting for that opportunity. 100%. So about me, it's mentally ready for if that chance comes. You know, we live in crazy times these days. You know, if these guys get COVID tests every week. You know, you could be from, you could be sixth or seventh pick. All of a sudden, Monday, you're in the starting lineup, you know. So yeah. mentally, you've just got to be ready and prepared. And that's how I've got to live. And I've got to be making sure that, you know, my doorstep's clean and I prepare as if I'm going to play in the week. And if I get the ball up, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And Keith, 
um, I think you know, you're known as a, a bowler, but I think you'd prefer to be known as a bowling or rounder. Is that yeah. a fair assumption? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, my first, at school I was always an all rounder. I batted three at school. Um, just before my first coke week, I suffered a stress fracture in, in 17, my first year in 17. Sure. And um, I had to actually I had to pull out of the coke week, but I got sent down as a batsman to that 17 week. So I've always had ability with the bat. Being a young man batting at the wonders on the slope in semi pro cricket, you know, the underprepared wickets, uh, regulation balls, it was tough. Um, and my average took a knock in the first in my first three or four years. And I'm steadily starting to build that back up again in confidence. Um, and again, you know, hats off to the coaches here at the Dolphins that have sort of backed me and believed in me. You know, Imran Khan's one of those guys now who's believed in my batting and they're actually trying to push my batting up. I mean, last season, I think it was one of the better seasons I've had with the bats. And I'm starting to put scores on the board and I think people are starting to take my batting a little bit more seriously, which is obviously a, it's a step in the right direction. No, for sure. Yeah, because I mean, it just goes on that thing as well that... Um... <clears throat> Told you respect you to bowlers, you know, runs on the board. That that's what exactly. you know, you need runs on the board. So if, if everyone can contribute, it'll be great. 100%. But then Keith, just in your perspective here as well, you know, how important is it to play straight? Um I wish I listened, I wish I listened to that um <laughs> five years ago when I thought, you know, cutting and pulling and sweeping and reverse sweeping was a cool thing to do, and it was that my downfall probably. But and it's so important. I think you know, you go back to the coaching of these youngsters and you keep out the ball that hits your wickets, you know, you can't get bold, you can't get hold of you. And, you know, that negates a lot of the game. So yeah. playing straight yeah. is it's so vital. No, absolutely, absolutely. But now a little bird whispered to me that you've, you've had an interesting game a few years back. I think it was when you were starting out in your, your career um, a lovely mm. gentleman by the name of Grant Rulison, who you played a lot of good cricket with. Okay. And you guys had <laughs> skittled the team. I think you had you know, absolutely annihilated them. And you guys had scored a lot of runs. You're doing very, very well. And I think mm. it was day three. And um, you were batting. And number 11 was there. And I think all the words were going towards number 11 to encourage him. And you were looking fresh. You were looking strong in the nets. And yeah. <laughs> the fifth ball, day three. <laughs> yeah. What happened? I think what? the whole talk, the whole team talk was like, it was just like, yeah, you know, like, get teeth on strike, get teeth on strike, you know, he's batting well. I think I was on like 36 at the time, and I just wanted to get my batting going. Oh. First, ball of the, first ball of the morning, he had Abraham, he's bought me a massive in back, and I shoulder his arm, off stump, caught me, and I was like, a rough cactus plant. <laughs> oh my I'm gonna God. Get, I'm, I'm going to get Grant back from these stories. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably going to be grumpy that I mentioned him, but it's all part of the fun and No, no, no. He's, he's my best mate, so he'll get it back. Don't worry. <laughs> One or oh, two no. balls that don't bounce in the net. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Uh, but I mean, mm. that just shows the beauty of cricket. I mean, yeah, you, you know, it happens. Um, and that's why you've literally got to take it ball by ball. But you are, I think. You know, instances like that just, just teach you, you know, oh, cricket is such a leveler. It's oh, such a leveler. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you know, when you mentioned it, they're talking about young ones, but just valuing your wickets. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have instances like you've been through. With you. I think it really culminates like that is so yeah. important. Value. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my word. yeah. <laughs> no, I've, of course, you've seen it all. <laughs> First last game is just Treated me a lot of ups and downs. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, but um, I'm looking forward to how you guys carry on through the season. I think your next game is, is coming up soon. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really hoping you guys do well in the four-day franchise. It's, it's a lack of competition. I love four-day cricket. It's, it's excellent. Yeah. Who's sort of been a, a mentor for you in the Dolphins squad? Because I know there's a lot of senior guys. It's like Robbie Fry, like a lot mm -hmm. of guys have been around. Has there been someone who's just mentored you through your time there at the Dolphins? Um, yeah, especially when I've come to, uh, when I came into the Dolphins, um, I wasn't really that um, young buck anymore. So I tried to lean on the guys like Robbie um, as much as I could. Robbie sort of took me under his wing when I first came in. 
not really not really too many other guys had played at the stage when I came in. A lot of the Dolphins, it's a young side, had played much more cricket than I had. Um, so we all pretty much were on a level. So to have a guy like Robbie in, you know, in the change room was a huge help, especially because, I mean, there's not many people that can do what he does. And I yeah. really try and mold my career to be similar to what he does in terms of the control and what he has with the ball. So you know, guys like Robbie and obviously now Quinton Friend, our goal coach, He's done really well for us. I mean, he's phenomenal. He's always in my ear with a little 2% here, 2% there. What can we do to get any better? You know, which is obviously a huge bonus. No, excellent, excellent. But Keith, you're not just all cricket. You get involved in a bit of wildlife, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the wildlife ranger efforts. Um, yes. Something on that line. Could you tell us a bit more exactly what it's about? How often are you involved? Um, or you on social media, or all of that type of stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so um, myself and my wife are both qualified game rangers. Um, mm. Yeah, that's something that we have a huge passion for. Uh, we love the bush. We every chance we get, we up up in Zululand, you know, trying to do some work. Mm. You know, Michelle's Michelle's heavily involved with um, Wildlands SA, and um, any conservation act that we can get involved in, we are. You know, we've recently relocated two rhinos from a game reserve in Zululand to some kind of game reserve. They've relocated an elephant that we're involved with from Temba. So we, we try and be in the bush as much as possible. And um, I was a part of the World Ranger Challenge, um, which was to raise some funds for rangers who lost money in, during lockdown. Okay. So we had to do a, a half marathon through the game reserve, and I was one of some kind of rangers that was able to I'll take in that um, half marathon, which was which was really cool. So mm. I mean, yeah, we had we had a good uh, social media following of that, and um, we've got a couple of pictures all on all on social media of that. No, brilliant. No, it's so nice when we, you know, players like yourself and <clears throat> the cricket setup commits to the outdoors and get involved. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's I think it, things are getting tougher and tougher for the wildlife out there. So I think they need all the help we can get shared because, yeah, I mean, they don't really have a voice and what you do is a voice for them. So that's excellent. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But otherwise, are you enjoying life in Durban? Are you doing a bit of surfing, swimming, whatever you might get up to? Because you were quite a keen swimmer at one stage, weren't you, as well? Yeah. Um, I was pretty staunch into my swimming. I was probably a bit of a swimmer than I am a cricketer. Um, that, um, that sort of paved way to my passion for my passion for cricket and team sports. Um, I love Durban. I love the sea. I'm an absolute water baby. Okay. Um, I've, I've got two surf skis and um, fishing skis. I surf with um, Darren de Pablo, one of the cricketers here that I surf with. I try to surf. I don't say that I'm, <laughs> um, you know, Jordy Smith, but I, I do try and surf. I try and spend as much time as I can on the beach in the ocean. I spearfish. That's Sort of one of my, my big hobbies is the actual ocean. So Durban, Durban's been good to me. No, I like it. You said you, you surf fish. Uh, so it's a, a surf ski. So it's a oh. fishing ski. So it's like a canoe that you fish on. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you also, sorry, do you play a bit of club cricket in Durban as well? Or do you? Yes. No, I do. I do. I play for um, the Hollywood Bears Crusade. Okay, nice. That's a that's a lack of setup there. That's a very oh, they're cool. awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. They're very, very good. And is club cricket in good hands there? Or, or what I mean is like in terms of team numbers. You know, do you have enough? You first, second, eleven, third, fourth, fifth. Mm. Is are things looking okay there? I think numbers are looking very strong. Yeah, Hannes Schradl, um, the CEO of the Dolphins, has done some really good work, and he's put in some some good care factor and good love into into club cricket. You know, I think guys are. The Dolphins boys are playing club cricket, which is good, you know, mm. and then obviously it forces down. And I think the leagues are looking quite strong. Because I know that, you know, last year they had the Dolphins Premier League, that 2020 mm. setup. Is that going to happen this year or are things a bit tight at the moment? Um, I'm not too sure. I don't think that'll be happening this year. The word is, I think, that um, sometime in January club cricket will commence. Maybe they'll try and slot it in like sometime here in January, but I don't think for the rest of this year we'll get much club cricket. Yeah. Either. But yeah, I think we're just going to be grateful for what we have at the moment. So you just keep going. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Keith, as we sort of draw to an end, 
Just could you give us your, your predictions of South Africa versus England, three ODR, three 2020s? Do you think the squad is in good stead? I know that England side is raring to go because they have got ambitions to win back to back World Cups. So they're going to be, I think, a tough nut to crack. How do you think we're going to fare? Do you think we've got home ground advantage? Yeah, I think the boys, um, from, from what I can see, is that squad is pretty strong. Um, I think it's quite well balanced. And I think the boys are hungry to play, to be honest. Mm. Um, I think the, the English guys have had a bit of taste of cricket. So I think that might be a slight up for them, maybe on the skill front. But I think on the hunger side, I think that boys are, are, itching to, are itching to get going. And I think, obviously, I know the Pommies love, uh, they love head time, but I think our boys are they, they're ready to make a statement. Yeah. And I just, I, you know, he's done very, very well. And that is in Ben Stokes. Um, mm. you know, they, they say, well, maybe one person can't win a match. But I think he can. <laughs> just, yeah, he has. He's, he's <laughs> he done. Does. Yeah, and I know, I think COVID's been giving him a hard time, so we'll see. But it's interesting because I see that Joffrey Archer's only playing 2020 cricket. And I think he, mm. he's a totally good guy to, to handle. But saying that as well, I think we've, we've got a jolly good bowling unit at the moment. And hopefully mm. the batting can, can go through. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, but uh, Keith, it's been really good to chat to you. No, thank you so much for having me. You're, you're a top guy, and I'm sure we're going to yeah, see you in action. Thanks, soon. Keith, top class. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your thank time. Thank you so much for having me. And like no, I, no, I do understand so that you guys are you're hectic, you're busy, so thank you so much. No, thank you for having me. That was awesome. All the best. Lekker, like man. You're a good man. No, no problem. Ryan, keep keep so doing much. the good work that you're on, it, like I said, with the world bluff. I'm jolly impressed. Um, you thank know, you. Of course, I've got a soft spot for animals. And I think you, yeah, we need it, man. We really need it. Oh, we yeah. do. We definitely do. But thank you so much for having me. All the best, Keith. Have a good one. Thanks, Cheers, everyone. Thanks, man. Cheers, everyone.